What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. Thank you for being here. And uh, if this is your first time here, don't forget to click the like button and follow the channel. Uh, we are going to talk all things Big Brother today. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to break down all these things from the inside perspective. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Bruno, and I was on Big Brother Canada season three and season five. And right now, it is uh, we are in the middle of the casting process for BB Can 12. So uh, if you guys haven't watched this already, make sure you check out the video I've made earlier uh, on how to get cast, little tips, little things that you can say and, and uh, do in your casting videos to kind of give you a little bit of an edge, things to say, things not to say, uh, and, and, and certain things like that. Also, if you are uh, in the running right now and you've made it to the next round, uh, I have other videos too, and everybody can watch these where it's how to play, little tips and stuff, just, uh, you know, don't take it for gospel. Obviously, play your own game. Be yourself. But uh, I give little tips on things to watch for that you might not know as a viewer, but something, again, as someone that's been through the house, these are things that I've seen and I know to watch out for, uh, certain things like cameras and stuff like that. Uh, just things to watch out for that give you that little bit of an edge that someone might not know. There's been many, many players in the past that have watched these videos and they hit me up after their season. They're like, man, thank you for making that video. It's helped me a lot. You know, this, when you mentioned this in the video, I definitely did that when I was in there and it helped me get through this or that or whatever it is so it might you might find some value in these videos you might not it doesn't matter check it out and uh, see for yourself so i want to say another thing too i am giving away my big brother canada bag this right here is the authentic bag the real deal you can't get this bag unless you've been on the show or unless someone that's been on the show gives it to you You can't just buy these in the store and i am giving mine away this has been through the season with me it was on stage with me it went through the whole season the whole uh way through with me and uh and i'm giving it away i'm part ways with it so someone that watches this video has a very good chance to win this i do stream six nights a week on twitch and kick i will put those links below as well make sure you follow those channels to find out how you can win this bag the giveaway will be done on december 1st so you have the rest of november to enter so make sure you click those links to my twitch channel my kick channel and find out how to enter into the draw you don't want to miss this once this bag is gone it's gone i can only give it away once so if you want a chance to win a real piece of history a real Real piece of Big Brother memorabilia from a house guest that's been through the season. This is your chance. Click those links, follow my uh, streaming channels, and uh, and best of luck to you. Okay, so I want to go through everything right now, and I want to talk a bunch of things. I want to start from like you know casting to you know the first week, what to do, uh, what sequesters like, uh, you know how the mid game plays out, late game, jury, all that stuff. I kind of want to I kind of want to break it down for you guys, and I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. I don't want to sit here for an hour, and I'm sure you don't want to sit here for an hour listening to this so i'm going to make it qu kind of as quick as possible uh just so you know so uh let's start with the casting process when i auditioned myself i did a live uh video and, and i know they don't do that anymore which is unfortunate because i know for myself i needed that i needed to be in person uh to to go in and they had to feel my energy get my energy that's how i am uh and i know there's a lot of you out there that feel the same way and unfortunately i don't think they do that anymore now it's all video um uh, submissions and stuff and and uh, it's unfortunate because there are people People like me that I needed that they needed to get me in person and uh, and that's just the reality of it but uh, that's what it is and that's just the way it is so um, I did make another video on things that do's and don'ts in your audition tapes. So maybe if you didn't make it on BB can 12, or maybe if you're an American and you're trying to audition for the American version or other shows, it does translate, uh, as well. So I'll put the link there as well to, you know, tips on your casting tips on the play, uh, links to my streams. Check those out guys. A uh, lot of information when I am live streaming, I do talk a lot about, you know, things to do when I do give tips and we do have these discussions, uh, and all that stuff. So feel free to ask if you do stop by the streams, uh, as well. So, uh, things to do and don't, I do mention that a lot. Um, and, uh, so if you made it past the first round, you're going to do a one-on-one -on -one video call with the casting producer, whoever, you know, sees your video or likes your video, whatever it is. And they're going to record you and they're going to ask certain questions. You got to make sure you crush it. Okay. Leave it all on the table. I always hate when I talk to people after and they're like, man, I wish I said this, or I wish I did that. Uh, it, it just, it's, it's, it, it's hard to hear because this is your chance and just leave it all on the table. Just say what you got to say. And my best advice is don't try to be all the characters in one 
um, you know, they, they see thousands of these videos and everyone says the same thing. They're the next Derek, the next Dan, the next whatever. Uh, just don't do that stuff. You know what I mean? They, they don't, they hear it a thousand times and it's like they just roll their eyes when they hear it for the thousand and, and tenth time. You know what I mean? Another thing I want to say, don't even for a second think you are as good as you think you are. And I know that sounds kind of rude to say, but I'm doing you a favor here. I'm actually doing you a favor. Do not think you are as good as you think you are. Okay. When you're sitting at home on the couch, you see everything. You see everybody's plays. You see everyone's DRs. In your mind, you're going to go in and it's like, I'm going to work with this person, this person. You know, when you're watching the season at home, you're like, oh yeah, if I was on that season, I would have worked with you, 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 and you. We would win HOH and target this person. And everything always works out in your favor. Okay. When you're in the house, that's not reality. That's not how it works. When you're at home and you're sitting in your chair, you know the answer. You have the right answer. And of course, everything's going to go your way. Everyone you wanted to work with obviously wants to work with you because this is all a narrative made up in your mind. They want to be your best friend and you guys are going to, you know, run to the end together. You're you're going to win. You're going to be Canada's favorite house guest and blah, 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 right? This is the narrative when you're sitting at home. Knock that right out of your head. Going in this house, you're not the biggest personality. You're not the best player. You're not the smartest player. You're not the best athlete. You're not the best socially. You're not you don't have the connections you think you have. Okay. Knock that out of your head right now going in because that's the reality. You could be the most charismatic person in the outside world and everyone can always tell you, Oh, you should go on big brother. You'd kill it. Do you know how many people hear that and then get on the show and flop because it's so much harder than they thought. It's not just about being likable. You gotta, there's so much more to it. Um, so I just want to say that right now and I'm, I'm saying it for you. I'm not saying it to make it to be mean, I'm saying it to, to let you know, get that out of your head right now. If you're going on the show, get that out of your head. Um, and you will thank me later because a lot of these players go in thinking they're the best at this, thinking they're the, they're going to go in and do this and, and everyone's going to want to work with them and blah, blah, blah. And it's just not realistic. So I just want to let you guys know that and I'm doing it out of love. Okay. Not to, to be mean, but yes, there are going to, and everybody in there has that same mindset going in that they're going to be the best and they're going to win. Everyone at the end of the day wants to win this prize. So you got to look at everybody as a competitor. Everybody has an equal slice of that pie to win. So if you get your mind right and you think that way, that's going to do wonders for you in the house. All right. So I just want to let you guys know that before I move on, but I want to talk about sequester a little bit. So a lot of people always ask how, what, what's sequester like? What is, what is sequester? What is it like when you're sequestered? So they put you in a hotel room and, uh, you're locked in there. It could be six days, seven days, two weeks, depending on, on what, what's going on. Uh, some people were there for four days. I was there, I think, for about eight days uh, the first time, and I think about uh, seven days the second time, uh, and that, or maybe even a little bit more. That's before the season. So that's when you do all your like ET Canada interviews or whatever it is in the States. Uh, you do all your interviews. You do all your promos. Uh, you know, you get ready. They have like a, a wardrobe room. So you go in, and they actually measure you everything. They weigh you. They measure you, your arms, your legs. They have everything tailored, all these the, the costumes for the, the show. They're all tailored to your body, okay? So it's not like you put on a costume and you're like, this doesn't fit me. It doesn't work that way. Everybody's costumes will fit exactly. It is measured to your body. Um, even the shoes, they put, they make you try on all the different types of shoes you're going to wear in the season, some extra ones and stuff. So you go into the room and you try on, you know, 10, 15 pairs of shoes. And what they'll do is they'll actually put insoles in your shoe. They measure your feet. They measure everything like really, really precisely. They put insoles in the shoes to make sure they fit perfectly. And you don't leave there until they are happy and you are happy with how the shoes fit, how everything is. And, uh, so there's no excuses that, oh, the, the clothes don't fit. The shoes don't fit. Everything is tailor-made to you individually, which brings me to the next point with the competitions. A lot of these people say, like I remember Dylan on season five, so I don't even fit in these competitions. Don't believe that, okay? That is uh, absolute bullshit. Um, everybody fits in every competition because, once again, the competitions are measured to your body. So if you're a smaller player, the distances between whatever it is is smaller. If you're a bigger player, same thing. It's the boxes or whatever you're in are set bigger. It's just the way it is. So everything is always set to your body, uh, size, everything. Uh, your reach, everything, 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 everything is measured out before the show. So when they build these comps, they are always built specifically to your body. So uh, whenever people tell you that, don't believe that. It is uh, it, everything is fair when it comes to 
that. So uh, Sequester is, uh, for those that want to know about it, Sequester is, I mean, it's not very fun. Uh, you're locked in a hotel room. There's no TV. They unplug your TV. They unplug the radio, uh, everything. You have no, your phone, uh, you can't call from your phone. If you pick up the phone, it immediately calls production. They have a room. Production has a room. You pick up the phone immediately. Their phone rings. They pick it up. Hey, what's going on? What do you need? So they'll give you like a, a, a checklist with the groceries. So you know, you go in, you check, you want yogurt, you want, I don't know, whatever, granola bars, oranges, whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. You check them all off, whatever's on the list. And, uh, you know, the next day or whatever it is, they come in with a couple of grocery bags, boom, filled with whatever was on that list that you checked off. And uh, you have your food and, and stuff like that. They also have uh, a restaurant attached to the hotel. Every night you get dinner um, and it's a really good dinner. It's really, really uh, nice. And, and, you know, you can get steak or whatever you want if that's what you're into. Um, very, very good restaurant. And, uh, yes, yeah, so you eat well there. You eat well for sure. A little funny story. When I was there, I used to get, uh, I didn't know the rules, man. I'm like, yo, these guys is a big, big shot TV uh, production. So I'm ordering like calamari and bruschetta for, uh, you know, appetizers and my main course and a dessert and a, and a wine. And the first night they let it go. And then the second, they're like, yo, man, you got to chill a little bit. Uh, that's not how this works. You know, I'm like, all right, cool. I don't know, man. Like, I, you know, I figured that, uh, you know, they have an unlimited budget, but I guess they didn't. So I got away with it the first night. I got some appetizers, some dessert and stuff. And then they're like, no, 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 man, you got to chill a little bit. You can have one drink, one, you know, beer, whatever you want, but that's it. So uh, another thing about uh, Sequester, it's you just watch movies. There's DVDs in there. When I was in there, you couldn't watch Big Brother. I think now they might have uh, like one or two seasons you can watch. I think I'm not hundred percent on that. Uh, but, uh, there was no big brother. So I watched a lot of game of Thrones and, you know, uh, Spartacus and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, just to keep yourself busy. That's all there is to do. I worked out a lot. They do have like a, a gym cart that they can, they bring in and out of the rooms. Uh, it's not very, you know, impressive. There's a couple of weights, a skipping rope in there and you know, just a couple little, nothing really crazy. Uh, but they wheel it around. They have a little dolly and they wheel it to your room and they put it down. Now I'm going to tell you something I did as well. Uh, the game started when you're in sequester. I'm going to tell you something. The game has already started. Uh, don't let that fool you. Okay. You can already play mental games with your house guests. And I did this both times I played, uh, one thing I would do. So you call production and you say, Hey, listen, uh, I want, what seasons do you have of whatever game of Thrones, whatever it is. Let's use that as an example. And they'll say, okay, well, we have uh, season one, season two, someone has season three. Uh, we have season four, we have season five. So what I would do is I knew someone was watching Game of Thrones season three. So I'd be like, yo, can I have Game of Thrones season four? Did I have any interest? In, I mean, I would watch it, but I didn't have an interest in watching it. I just wanted to take it. So whoever was watching Game of Thrones couldn't continue watching it. So what I would do is I would hoard all the seasons, the next season of like Game of Thrones, Spartacus, uh, whatever it was, whatever series, I would ask all these different series and I would just hoard all the movies and they would just sit on my desk in my room. I had no intent of watching any of them, but I uh, definitely wanted to get that mental warfare going where people were like, yo man, I got to watch the next season. Where is it? You know? So they would call me be like, Hey, are you done with, uh, you know, game of Thrones season four? And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm about to start watching it. Sorry. You know, I was watching something else and they're like, okay, cool. No problem. And they call me the next day. Yo, you done with it yet? No, I'm not done yet. So you just, you know, you hoard it and you get this mental warfare. And I would actually do the same thing with the uh, weights I would do the same thing I would I would call in the weights and I wouldn't use them and I would just you know I do different types of workouts and stuff and so I'd call in the weight uh, the weight box or whatever and they'd be like oh someone's waiting for the weights are you done I'm like no, no no just give me a chance so you're you're getting in their head you're you're letting people be uncomfortable in sequester before the game even starts and that's that's uh something that you can have fun with and uh yeah you can bother people you know you're you know these are your competitors uh and you can bother them at the same time and it's just a little kind of thing like that but anyway uh so sequester is is, is pretty you know it's it's there's nothing crazy to do if you're you know if you're bored or whatever you can uh, you know ask like say for a friend you can call some production they can come up and play board games with you if you want or something like that uh, obviously they can't tell you anything but uh you know i never did that myself i always saw as uh, i always saw it as this is the calm before the storm i want my peace of mind i don't want you know i just want to be by myself get my mind ready get all that stuff ready and that's what uh sequester is basically like and then when it's time to go they pick you up and you sit in the car uh, for a couple of hours uh, right outside the studio. Then they pull you in the studio. This is move-in day now. They pull you in a studio. 
now you're in a room in in the studio by yourself with it with a handler and uh it's the waiting game it's hurry up and wait you wait hours and hours you're watching movies in there you're just kind of waiting you know you're moving in uh at some point today you don't know when you never know what time it is because you know you don't have a watch you don't have a clock you have none of that stuff so you don't know what time it is so you just watch movies until it's like all right it's time to go they'll move you to another section and then you're backstage now the both both times i played i had two different entries or entrances the first time i went in with a group i believe it was five uh the second time i did go in by myself because i was a returning player and they they made us all go in one at a time uh but the first time we all lined up be- backstage all beside each other headphones on music loud so we couldn't uh, see each other there's no talking you have your heads down but you're all lined up beside you so i could see you know i think i went in with neha godfrey willow and uh ginger ninja greg that was my group going in so i could see them i'm all we're all standing beside each other but you can't talk to each other you can't acknowledge each other you're just kind of sitting there against the wall heads down kind of thing um, and then you go on stage and you go in the second time I was by myself. So it was obviously a little different went in, uh, see you later, but yeah, opening night, uh, premiere night is just, it's such a long day, but it's such an exciting day. And, uh, and for those that are going through the process right now, I just want to say, uh, enjoy it, like really soak it in. Even the times that just suck and, and they, you know, they feel long, just enjoy it because once it's all over, you'd love to go back. And, and fortunately for me, I got to go back and do it again. But for 99% of the players, they never get that chance. So enjoy every minute of it, even the, the worst parts. Just try to enjoy it. And now, I want to get into what week one is like in the house. Week one is a lot of fluff. It's a lot of small talk and trying to get to know everybody and their families and blah, blah, blah. And it's just everyone's trying to break the ice. And everyone's on the same boat. Everyone's feeling awkward. They don't know what to say to you. It's very, very common. Everyone's just, they want to talk to you. They just don't know what to say. They don't know how to connect. They don't know how to start the conversation. And sometimes it can be very awkward. A lot of times in the house, there's a lot of awkward silence. That's just the reality of it. What you guys see on TV is, you know, it's an edited show but uh, there is a lot of awkward silence sometimes you try to talk to someone and you're supposed to stand there like okay we got nothing to say that's just the reality uh so week one is a lot of just trying to connect with people get to know each other and i want to talk about something else that um you know be if you are an older house guest and i'm talking you know 50s 60s whatever it is um you know it's easy to be the outcast and usually in week one week two you're the early target because that's just the easiest thing because early on people don't want to make the moves and, the, and make waves and and be the first one to take the shot they want to kind of settle in a little bit make their friends see where everyone you know sits and see where everyone you know fits in and then they start playing so it's usually the easiest uh to get rid of the older house guest but i'm going to also have something to say about that is in the early game it's easier to target them get them out and kind of you know okay we're moving on together you can make some bonds and some friendships sure but as the game progresses and i'm going to say week four week five week six so on uh they become almost impossible to get rid of because by that point the targets are made and they usually get that free ride to the end um, so it's, it's one of those things. If you, you got to get them out early, if you don't, they're sitting in the final two and that's one spot taken up. So, um, as much as it's a disadvantage coming in as an old, an older house guest, it almost because it becomes an advantage, uh, as the game progresses and goes later on, because you're going to start targeting, you know, the bigger players. And this is something I wanted to get to, uh, as well as when you kind of get into like the mid game. Uh, the mid game is more of that's when the players usually get targeted, the really good players, the better players, because that's when everything kind of comes to an end. All the disposable and uh, players are kind of getting knocked out a little bit. You know, your little side alliances here, you can get rid of them here, get rid of them there. But then it comes to a point where it's, you know, there's the people that everyone wants to bring to the end and then the players. That's what you get when you're in the middle and the big players start taking those shots uh, one way or another. If it's through somebody else or through yourself or your alliance or whatever it is that's when all the shots get taken it's usually around the middle uh, of the game week five week six week seven that's when you see a lot of the big players kind of go uh, when then what happens is whoever survives that usually has a really good chance to win at the end. And we've seen that multiple, multiple times where, you know, you have a bunch of people that want to get, they want to bring you to the end. You want to bring all these players that you, you see that aren't good competitors or just don't understand the game or don't know what's going on or don't have these connections. Those are the players you want to bring to the end with you that you know you can beat. And, you know, so that's why a lot of these times we see these seasons where it's like the final five and it's just horrible. It's, you know, there's one or 
or two players and the other three or four are just there. They're just furniture. They're just whatever they are. And that's very common because that's the right way to do it. Is it entertaining for the show? No. But when you're a player in there, that shouldn't matter. What matters to you is winning the show. And I know, you know, people probably don't want to hear that. They want to be entertained. But if you're thinking as a player, you don't care about the entertainment. You don't care. You don't care what the people at home are thinking. You want to win the show. You have one job when you're there. Win the show. You have, you know, X amount of weeks to do it. Just do it. And uh, and and who cares what anybody in the audience says or thinks about you because they're not there trying to win 100000 or if you're American, $750,000. That's a big payday. So you do what you got to do. If it's a boring win, who cares? Laugh your way to the bank, cash in your check, and who cares? You know, it's hard to hear all the noise uh, when you have all that money blocking your ears. You know what I mean? So uh, just my best advice to anybody, just do your thing. So that is sequester and that is the week one. And I talked kind of like the mid game. I want to talk about jury a little bit uh, with jury. I got to say jury isn't what everyone thinks it is. The way the show produces it, the way the show kind of shows it to you, they make you think like everyone's talking game and everyone's, you know, uh, you know, everyone's arguing and, oh, I'm this vote this way and vote that way. It doesn't work that way. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Uh, whenever you go now, again, I've been in jury twice. So uh, I, I have two seasons to compare to. And plus, obviously, I talked to all the other house guests and we all shared stories and stuff. So I know I know how it is. But I've been there twice personally myself, so I can even compare the two seasons and it is exactly the same. It's it's the same both ways. So nobody's there trying to push this narrative. Nobody's there trying to get you to vote for their whatever. You know who you're going to vote for. Now, I want everybody in here right now that's watching this video, just put yourself in the situation for a second, okay? Um, no, the, the finale night does not matter. The questions on finale night do not matter. The speeches on finale night do not matter. I want to make that very, very clear. I know a lot of people think, oh, they're killing these these answers. They're going to win. They do not matter. It is no, They have no impact on how you are going to vote. And let me explain it to you because you guys are probably going to think, oh, that doesn't make sense. But I promise you, um, this isn't an opinion. This is how it is. Okay. So if you're playing the game and your best friend is in the game, and maybe your best friend's not even a good player. Let's just say, let's for just for the, uh, this example, your best friend is a bad player. So who are you going to vote for? You're going to vote for, you know, your best friend or someone that deserves it. You know, obviously you're going to vote for your best friend. That's the reality of jury right there. Um, when you're evicted, you already know who you're going to vote for. You're going to, you already know in your mind, you have a list, you know, if this person's the final two, I'm voting for them. If not, if it's this person, I'm voting for them. And you know, in your mind all the way down, if you're the, if you know, if there's four people left in the house, you know, if, if this person's there, it's that you're going to vote that way, that way, that way, that way, you know, you know, in your head, what your voting order is. It doesn't matter what happens at, at finale night. It never has, and it never will. Okay. I just want to make that very clear that, uh, these questions at the end and their speeches think about it this way as well. You know, there's, you know, this last season, BB 25, there was a hundred days. Do you think that they're going to be able to explain their entire hundred days of, of playing the, the entire game in, in a one and a half minute speech? No, it makes no difference. Um, plus everything's going on. They're not really listening. It just, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you right now. So, uh, you're going to vote for your friend in the end. And, and when you're in jury, the jury always knows who's going to win way before, uh, we do. So you go into jury and everyone kind of just spills everything. Nobody cares. They've already lost and, and they don't care anymore. And I know they make it seem on the show like, oh, I'm going to fight for my friend and, and uh, you know, I'm going to convince. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. Okay. So when people come to jury, they don't care anymore. Cameras are off. They're just like, all right, let's break it down. They're like, yo, like you sit down and they're like, all right, I was coming for you this week and I tried to backdoor you there, but it didn't work. And me and this person were really working together and that was my real target. And everyone just spills everything. Like, you know, everybody's game uh, and everybody does that. It's just the reality of it. You know wh how they're going to vote, who they're going to vote for. You're not changing their mind. They're not changing your mind. Their speeches aren't changing anybody's mind. You know, they're, they're voting their order. They know my voting. That's just the reality of it. And that's just how jury works. So I just want to make that very clear that I know a lot of people think the speeches make this big difference. And we saw Matt, um, this season, everyone thought Matt was going to win, but his, his answers were just absolutely atrocious. And then people think, Oh, he threw it with his answers. Uh, no, that's, not what happened and cam and Corey. if you ever watch their interviews and stuff they say the same thing cam's like you know even when he voted cameron said i told this person i was voting for them a month ago well that says enough right there a month ago uh he said i was gonna vote for him or he was gonna vote for him so he did 
Corey said the same thing. He's like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't going to vote for Matt. It was, uh, I was voting for Jag no matter what. It didn't matter what the questions say. And I've been saying that for a very long time. And that's just the truth. So that's how jury works. Jury is very relaxed. You watch a lot of movies. Uh, you can go outside. You can't leave the property, but you can go outside. And, you know, everyone just hangs out and talks. There's no bedtime, no curfew. Uh, you do live with a couple of people. There's, um, you know, you live, they call mom and dad. It's people from production. So you have a, a male and a female from production that live with you. And, you know, they make sure that everything goes well and <clears throat> there's no problems. And if you, you know, if you guys want certain things for dinner, they'll go into town and, and buy you dinner. And, and usually the jury houses are hours and hours away from the house. I remember, um, I won't say the location, but on season uh, three, it was about two hours away uh, from the studio. And on season five is about three hours away from the studio. So it's like a three hour drive and, uh, and it's in the middle of nowhere. Like it's, you're not finding the jury house. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like you're in like a, 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 a busy area. You're like in the bush. So um, yeah, it's far. Uh, but yeah, but I can tell you this, when you get evicted, um, you kind of go backstage, you talk to a psychiatrist or psychologist, whatever it is. Then you go on stage to see Arissa, uh, in the States is a little different. When you get evicted, you go right on stage and then you do that stuff. It's kind of flipped. Um, and then you stay in a hotel room that night. And then the next morning you wake up, you do all the media and then you go to jury. And that's why a lot of times when you see people showing up to jury, it's, it's, it's the next day. It's dark and stuff like that because they do media all day. And then you go uh, over to the jury. So I just wanted to say a few things here, guys. Uh, don't forget you can win this bag. Uh, I'm doing a giveaway for this bag. Make sure you follow uh, my Twitch channel, my Kick channel. I will have the links below. Uh, and it'll tell you right there how to get a chance to win this bag. The draw will be December 1st. I want to let you guys know uh, somebody will win this. I can only give it away once. Once I give this bag away, it's gone. It's out of my hands. Somebody else owns it. The only way to get these bags is to play on the show or if a player gives it to you and I'm giving mine away. So uh, this is a real piece of memorabilia, a real piece of history. Uh, from Big Brother, this is this is the real deal. And if, if you guys, if if one of you win it, and you want me to sign it or something, I can do that. Uh, maybe I'll give you a nice little personalized note too, or something like that, if that's what you want. Okay. So uh, I just want to say I wanted to keep this video very very short. If you have any questions, if there's anything in this video, if it uh, if it gave you any more questions to ask, please drop them below. Uh, don't be afraid to ask. Tell me, uh, you know, what you thought of BB25. Did you like it? What do you think of the reindeer games? BB reindeer games coming up. Uh, what are you hoping to see on BB Can 12? Did you audition? Did you make it? Did you not? Don't even, you don't even have to say if you made it or not, but let me know in the comments below. Let's have the conversation. I will get back to each and every single one of you. Again, if you want to come by the streams, I stream six nights a week. Come by. I answer questions all the time. We play games together. We chat. We do a bunch of things. We do watch parties, uh, different reality show watch parties and stuff. So if that's something you're interested in, guys, come on by and join the community. I want to say thank you very much if you made it this far in the video. I kind of rushed through it all. There's lots to go over. I go over it a lot, uh, but I want to keep this video fairly short. I know people don't want to sit here for an hour listening to me just blab so um yeah let me know if, the, if you have any more questions we can answer them below i hope you guys have a great day don't forget to follow button and i hope you guys have a great day and hopefully we have a really good bb can 12 um i'm hoping that we get a good season and and yo don't forget if you're watching the traders uh let me know i'm loving it uh such a good show all right i'm out of here guys have a good one take care peace peace